What's going on folks? Today in Stu's Garage, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a racing uh, relay panel for your car. Um, this is pretty much being done in preparation for the upcoming motor swap. Speaking of which, my new motor is actually sitting right there next to me. Um, I'm not gonna show you guys that yet, but don't worry, you're gonna know what it is very soon. I'm not gonna string it out and milk it, I just don't wanna show you guys what it is just yet. Um, so anyways, like I was saying, um, I wanna get fresh wiring in the car uh, for the upcoming motor swap and dash swap that's gonna happen. And I'll show you guys the dash that's going in the car in just a second, if you guys hadn't seen that already. But basically, the purpose of me doing all of this prep work is to get in there, uh, remove a lot of the old crusty wiring that had been in the car, uh, get rid of some of the hackery that took place before I owned the car, because there's a little bit of funny business underneath the dash as far as the wiring goes. And it basically gives me a chance to know exactly what's going on as far as the electronics and the wiring inside the car. So if anything is uh, jacked up, I know right where to go to fix it and I don't have to guess. Um, with the old wiring in, the, in these old cars, uh, I've had experiences more than once where you go in to fix or change one thing and you put everything back together and then all of a sudden something else is not working. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the first times I worked on the car, I went to replace my uh, speedometer uh, cable and when I put it back together, I had no headlights. So that's the type of stuff that I'm looking to eliminate because uh, these old crusty wires, you just don't want to start touching and messing with them. So anyways, uh, let's go take a look at the dash real quick. All right, so for those of you all ha who haven't seen, um, this is a uh, dash out of an A36 M3. And uh, my buddy Chris hooked me up and uh, helped me out with the uh, with a nice Alcantara wrap on it. Um, we trimmed it. It's all ready to go inside the Mustang. As you can see here, I've got a uh, Samsung tablet, which is going to replace my gauges. Um, I've got this awesome switch panel from the 12 volt guy, which is going to replace a lot of the functions. So pretty much this thing is going to get a whole new interior electronic refresh. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing the uh, relay switch panel to go with that. You don't need a switch block to go with your relay panel. You can do it without it, um, but it's just up to you how you want to do it. And I'm refreshing everything. So uh, as far as supplies that you're going to need for making your own relay block panel, um, you're going to need your relays, of course. You're going to need a fuse block. Um, and you're going to need these uh, terminal connectors. I'm not really sure what you call these, but basically you can get all this stuff on eBay. I highly re recommend getting your uh, relays on eBay because this is like $100 worth of uh, relays if you were to just to go buy them in the store. Um, I think I spent like $20 on them and I got 10 relays. So um, probably not going to end up using all 10. A lot of people do these style boards with just four relays, but it's really up to you. I'm going to have everything on its own individual circuit. Nothing's going to share. So, like I said, I'm going to have 10. So I've got 10 relays. I've got 12 fuses. And each of these terminal blocks is uh, 12 sockets. So obviously I'm going to only use 10 out of 12. But I could pop two more relays on if I wanted to. Uh, the cool thing about these relays is these are the snap together ones. Uh, you don't have to get the snap together style, but it is going to help things to get to be a little bit more clean. Um, so pretty much what I'm going to do today is um, I've got everything pretty much mocked up the way that I want it. I'm going to go ahead and fasten these relays down uh, to where they're going to reach everything that they need to reach. All right, so I went back and I checked my wiring diagram for uh, these relays that I bought. And if you pay attention to the numbers uh, where it says like 87A, 86, 87, and 85, that should be universal across any relays. However, these wire colors um, are not universal. But based on this diagram for these relays that I bought, I should actually be able to figure out um, what it is that I'm doing here. So, um, Obviously, with everything with the Drift Fox, I want it to look cool, and I want it to be functional. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire the power wire. So, what's going to happen is power is going to come directly from battery into this screw. Um, and that's how whatever is getting power is going to get power. Hence why there's fuses here. So, power is going to come directly from the battery to here. 
it's gonna hit these fuses and it's gonna go out to either this side or this side so I mean this is two rows but the input is here and the outputs are along the outside and that's why I've got five on this side and five on this side so it's basically gonna look kinda of symmetrical until I get down here with some of the stuff that you'll see later so um, let's just start by grabbing all my red wires and hooking them up to a terminal on each side all right in an effort to keep everything clean and professional looking I'm gonna be using these little connectors here straight from Harbor Freight got the huge assorted package of them and I'm getting to put them to use so what I'm gonna be doing is trimming down all of my power wires and connecting them right to their designated power terminal Alright, now that I have all my little uh, round connectors on, I'm starting to screw these down to the fuse block. Alright, so I've got my power all connected up. Um, and one of the things I forgot to show you is that um, this particular fuse block comes with a nice little plastic cover that goes over here and uh, it's got stickers on it with labels around here somewhere I don't know where they are but that way you can label exactly what each of these um, power sources go to that way you don't have to get under there and guess and memorize and if somebody else wanted to work on your stuff they can see what it is so it's very important to make sure that your stuff is clean cleanly laid out and labeled alright so skipping ahead a little bit um, I think I made this thing more over complicated in my mind than what it really needed to be um, if you look at the wiring diagram that I showed you to begin with, it's pretty much the same for any relay that you're going to use. The only difference is going to be the colors. So um, based on the colors, I can pretty much piece this thing together myself. Uh, I've got the blacks separated down here. I've pretty much got all the wire types separated right now. So um, what you saw is first we did the reds, which is the power, which the power comes in through here. Um, Next, all the black wires are going to be ground, and these are going to go directly to the chassis. Um, this is easy, but I just haven't uh, figured out an attractive way to do this just yet, but um, I, I just want to make it look good. Uh, the next thing is these white wires, which is uh, 87A, I think. Yeah, so this is 87A, which is like an alternate, which I don't actually know what to do with these. Um, this is the fifth pin and I only really needed a four pin relay so I don't even know if these could be used for something I'm probably gonna end up just tying them off and leaving them to the side um, but I don't need these white wires this is the fifth pin uh, so pretty much what we're left with at this point is our uh, yellow and blue wires which um, I have to look back at the diagram but one wire goes to the device that's being powered and one wire is going to go to the switch and of course the other side of the switch is going to be ground so um, basically when the switch creates a ground connection uh, the other side of the circuit trips the relay which in turn uh, causes the device to come on so the last thing I'm going to be doing is hooking up all of my blue wires to one block of circuits and all of my yellow wires to another block of circuits. All right, moving right along, we've got our yellow wires all connected up to the terminal block. Um, I went ahead and numbered each of my relays uh, just to help keep track of things, and I also matched them to the corresponding number that you have here on the uh, block, and I'll do the same thing on this side. So now that's ready to go together there. And this is going to be from the switch. So all I have to do is wire the wire from the switch to the next terminal over here on this side. And um, all the blue wires are gonna come to the top side of this. And whatever accessory I'm going to have wired to that is gonna go on the bottom side of this. So let's go ahead and get the blue wires wired up. All right, folks, fast forward a little bit more, and the relay board is done. So, um, it actually turned out pretty good. Um, I don't know. 
if it looks as cool as what I want it to look. But uh, my wires are pretty orderly. I try to keep everything nice and uniform. Um, so like I was saying before, the switch is going to attach to this side. The output, whatever is being powered, is going to attach to this side. All the fuses are here. Um, everything is numbered and labeled, uh, even though you may not be able to see it that well on camera. But um, like I said, this is going to go in conjunction with my um, new switch panel that I have. And it's definitely going to make uh, the motor swap a lot easier. Uh, the only thing I'm probably going to end up adding to this is, as you can see, I have my grounds just kind of flopping around down here. A lot of people just sol consolidate this into one wire. Um, that's probably the cleanest option for me to do at this point, but I don't have to decide today. It's going to be a little bit of time before I actually end up putting this inside the car. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while, little while until I decide exactly how I want to uh, finish this up. And it's just really, it's just a matter of aesthetics for me at this point. So, um, I don't know. I held off from doing this for a really long time, mostly because I was intimidated by the idea of doing this. But when you think about it, um, you're not actually, you know, wiring circuits and connecting anything. Really, you're just neatly separating out all the wires, you know, if you think about it that way. The only place where these relays actually connect to each other is right here at this screw where the power comes in. After that, everything is separate. So you're really not wiring anything together. You're just routing the wires and running them to neat little spaces. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to this. So I hope this helped you guys. Um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And uh, thanks for checking out the video. Catch you next time.